Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Second part to chapter four. We are going to take care of a lot of little details in three really tiny sections. We're going to start talking about exactly what is an acid. We're going to look at the, the proper definitions that we use today. And we're going to work that into equilibrium and something called a conjugate pair. And then quickly define a couple of words at the end. And um, First thing, what we have to do is explain exactly what an acid is. Uh, specifically, we got to think about what is H+. This may seem a little strange, but this is what we told you in grade 11, and it's not exactly right. An acid will dissociate into its parts, an H+, and Cl-, and we know that Cl- is a spectator, but H+, we haven't really given you the full story on that yet. So there is some fairly interesting theory, I think, around this definition of H+, and it's definitely something you haven't thought of in the past. Um, first off, if you're just a regular atom, an H atom, you're going to have one proton and one electron. And you're going to have a charge of zero. The positives and the negatives will cancel off and you have an overall charge of zero. But if you're an H+, plus, it means that you lost an electron. And if you lost an electron, all that you have left is a proton. So an H+, plus isn't even an element anymore, just simply a proton. So normally you'd have your proton in your center and your electron floating around um, an orbital, but when you get rid of that electron, there's nothing floating around that orbital anymore. So all you are is just one big, dense, insanely small, powerful, positive charge. So this H plus really is just a proton. And that's what we call it from here on in. We're not going to say H+. Plus. We're going to say proton, because that's exactly what it is. So an acid actually loses protons, and that's what we're going to be talking about. It's what gives acids all of its characteristics is the, is the amount of H+, plus or the amount of protons that are, that are there. Um, and here's the other little thing. You don't actually ever have just random H pluses floating around solution. Um, it's way too powerful of a positive charge to be ever be by itself. So here's an extra little thing. When you have water, water looks like this diagram here, H2O. The oxygen has a partial negative charge, and the hydrogens have partial positive charges. So when you're in solution and you have an H plus there, that is such a strong positive charge that it's going to attract anything that's even remotely negative. So there's going to be a bond that forms there. So that H+, plus, that proton, is actually going to attach itself to water. So you don't even have water anymore. What you're going to have is H3O+. Plus. And H3O+, plus is acid. Every acid has H3O+. Plus. The amount of H3O+, plus, or lack of it, is what gives acids its characteristics. And just to throw something more twisted at you, that H plus is actually so powerful, it's not just going to attract one water molecule, it can attract multiple water molecules. I've read some instances where they feel that it could attract up to 20. Now, that's well beyond the scope of our course, but just think of how strongly positive that proton is. It's not just going to attract one water molecule, but 10, 15, 20 water molecules. But for Grade 12, we just think it's going to attract 1. So when an H plus is floating in solution, we make H3O plus. And H3O plus is called hydronium. The hydronium ion is everything that we're going to be talking about in this chapter. It gives acids all of its properties. So this is the Chem 11 way. We're not doing it anymore. This is the grade 12 way. Okay, HCl in water isn't going to form H+, plus. it's going to form H3O+, plus, and still Cl is the spectator. So this is the ionization of an acid. And what we're going to do is throw a few definitions around with that today. If you want to see it in a picture, this ionization in a picture, here's the HCl, there's the H, it's going to get transferred to that water to make H3O+, plus and Cl-. minus. So that proton was transferred to the water molecule. So we need to know how to write ionizations. I'm going to do the first one, and you guys are going to finish this up in, in your class tomorrow.
So it's H2O liquid, single arrow. That H is going to be donated to make H3O plus, and then whatever is left over, ClO minus. So that's an acid ionization. Okay, and you're going to do these in class tomorrow. So with that comes two unbelievably specific definitions. What's an acid and what's a base? Um, yesterday we learned about Arrhenius and his definitions. We are no longer going to use those. Sorry, buddy. We got Bronsted Lowry. Bronsted Lowry, two people that were working on this at approximately the same time, but because the internet wasn't invented way back in the early 1900s, they didn't know they were doing it at the same time. And they came up with very similar definitions. But because we're lazy and Bronsted's name was given first, thanks Alphabet, we're going to kind of screw Lowry here. Um, we're just going to call these Bronsted definitions. Sorry, buddy. Here goes your royalty. So what did he say? He said an acid donates the proton and a base accepts the proton. That's it. If you donated a proton, you're called an acid. If you've accepted a proton, you're called a base. End of story. So what does that look like? Well, we need to identify acids and bases. HCl became um, Cl minus and H2O became H3O plus. You got to follow the path of that H. HCl had the H and it donated it to there. So that means that's an acid and that's a base. That donated, H2O accepted. So HCl is an acid and H2O is a base. Okay, another example. Let's look at what's happening. NH3 is becoming NH4 plus. H2O became OH. Well, look at where that H went. H2O donated its H to NH3. So in this example, this water is an acid and NH3 is a base. So here are two examples. One, water was acting like a base. The other, water is acting like an acid. This does not relate to anything you did in Science 10 or Chem 11. You have to follow the path of that age. Certain species can be both acids and bases, and those species are called amphiprotic, kind of like a frog, amphibian, water, land, acid, base. Okay? So what you're going to have to do is get really comfortable identifying acids and bases. Sometimes they're not so obvious. HCO3 became H2CO3. It accepted an H. So that H from HSO4- minus was donated. So that HSO4- minus is acting like an acid, and HCO3- minus is acting like a base. You have to follow the path of the H. And you're going to try these in your class tomorrow. Equilibrium is the exact same thing. It doesn't matter. All that means you have two reactions at once. So instead of just looking on one side, we're going to look at both sides. H3BO3 became H2BO3. Well, it lost an H. And NH3 became NH4. It gained it. So that H went there. So now, that's the acid. That's the base. Let's look in reverse, because equilibrium has a forward and reverse. NH3 became NH4. That H is going to go back. So that's the acid, and that's the base. Here we have equilibrium, acids and bases on either side, and this leads us into our last topic today, conjugate pairs. So in class tomorrow, you're going to try those, and let's move on to our last topic. Conjugate pairs are these. It's how did it start, how did it end? You're going to have an acid and a base on either side. Acid donates a proton to form its conjugate base pair base accepts a proton and forms its conjugate acid. Okay? You'll always have an acid and a base and an acid and a base on either side. So let's just try a couple of these and you're going to try the rest tomorrow. NH3 became NH4. Kachu became Kachu without an H. Let's just write the first acid-base pair in no particular order. That's an acid because it donated its H to there. CH3COOH is an acid pair, is an acid, sorry, and its pair, which is a base, is COO minus. And the other acid base pair is NH4 plus, and its partner, its base pair, is NH3. Okay, let's try it again. H2SO3 became HSO3, 
H2PO4 became H3PO4. So where did the H go? H2SO3 donated its H to H2PO4. So that's the acid, that's the base, that's the acid pair, and this is the base pair. Okay? You guys can try the rest of these in class tomorrow. Woo! Didn't see those. Another type of question is simply, I'm going to give you one species and you write its conjugate. So if this, if I'm telling you that this is a base, you write the acid, the acid has to have an extra H+. Plus. Two things, H+. Plus. So this acid is going to be that. I gave it an H and I knocked down the charge by one, H+. Plus. If this is the base, its acid is HSO4-1. This H goes out in front, and I'm knocking the charge down. You will try C and D tomorrow. Okay, I can also do the opposite. If I'm telling you that this is the acid, you want to write the base, it has to have one less H+. plus. So HNO3 is going to be NO3-. minus. HNO3 is the acid, NO3 minus is its conjugate base. H2C2O4 is going to become HC2O4 minus. I've lost an H and I've lost a positive charge. You guys can try those two. And lastly, amphiprotic and polyprotic. Words we're not going to use that often, but it's important nonetheless. Poly means more than one, protic means proton. So, more than one proton, um, different forms of that word. Monoprotic means one proton. Diprotic means two protons. Triprotic means three protons. Naphiprotic, we just touched upon. It means you can be an acid and a base. Okay? Um, if you have more than one H, you can donate more than one H. You just have to donate them one at a time. So if you're diprotic or triprotic or polyprotic, you lose your H's one at a time. And this is basically just an ionization, but it's stepwise. Um, you release them one at a time. So here, the first step, HSO4 is going to donate the H, and here is the second step, it's going to donate the H. So it's turning from a complete acid into a complete base in two steps, because there's two H's. Okay? Um, there's a single arrow in the first one and a double arrow in the second one. Wait a few days, we'll, we'll chat about why that is. But for now, if you have more than one H, you can donate them all just one step at a time. And lastly, amphiprotic means you can be an acid and a base. Some things can be both. Okay, here's an example of H2CO3, carbonic acid. Second time you've seen it in this course. It donates its H to make HCO3 minus, and then HCO3 minus can donate it again. Um, these can go back and forth. Um, if, and if they can go back and forth, uh, you can be an amphiprotic anion. And I, and we'll, we'll, we'll see a lot more examples about that later. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, we have a few things to do in class tomorrow. And we're going to have some fun, do some Halloween things. And we're going to work on this self-test that's at the end of these notes. Um, you want to fire that out now, save you from doing it in class. That's your prerogative. But this self-test will get done tomorrow, as, as well as some of these practice questions. See you a bit later.